Sarah Badwe here with Horse Racing Nation to debut a new weekly segment that I'll be doing where I talk about a couple of horses coming up in weekend races that I think have a good chance to outrun the odds, just as my Twitter handle suggests. So this weekend, we're going to look at a couple of races from Kentucky Downs. There's a lot of stakes action going on there, great purses, full fields of racing, and hopefully a couple of opportunities, as I have picked some horses that they may not win, but they definitely will be prices. So starting off in race number nine, it's the grade two turf sprint stakes. And it will be tough to get around the favorite in the number 12 horse, Arrest Me Red. But because of his presence in this race, everyone else is a much better price. And the horse that I want to give another chance to is the number seven, Gregorian Chant, who is 10 to 1 on the morning line. Now, I can make a couple of excuses for some of his efforts, and we'll go through what he's done this year. He's a seven-time winner in 22 starts, and he started off this season with an easy and very confident win on the downhill turf at Santa Anita, going six and a half furlongs over Bran, who is also entered in here. Then he was third behind Arrest Me Red and Bran in the Twin Spires turf sprint stakes at Churchill Downs. And you end up with the question of what do you do with those horses that ran at Churchill Downs over that turf course? Because many ran either uncharacteristically poorly or uncharacteristically well on that particular turf. He did run well in there to finish third. So you can't really say that he didn't handle it. But of only a few races that were run on the course this year before the decision was made to cancel turf racing for the meet, looking at our track trends tool of the 14 turf sprints won, the inside posts were the least likely to produce a winner, and Gregorian Chant was inside for that race. Now, looking at his next start in the grade one Jiper at Belmont Park, he now had to break from the outermost post in this field of 13. And the majority of the winners in six furlong turf sprints came from posts one through six. So he's once again in a less favorable post position. He never really has the opportunity to save any ground. He's wide on the far turn as well. While the eventual winner, Casa Creed, is saving ground and gets that perfect inside outside split to run down Arrest Me Red and True Valor. While Gregorian Chance certainly looks very flat in the lane, you can also see that nobody's really making up ground on the outside portion of the track, so perhaps he was against the flow of the race in there as well. Finally, we get to his most recent effort at Del Mar, where he did have a good trip and finished second, once again ahead of Brand, going a mile, and Aridio upset that field. However, Aridio did return in the grade two Del Mar mile with a second place effort at nine to one. So it's not as though that race had absolutely zero form to go on at all. I really like the return to sprinting for Gregorian chant. I think that I can make up some excuses for his efforts that were not winning ones at both Churchill Downs and Belmont Park. And I think that his last effort does show that he still has some good races left in him. If he's anywhere near that 10 to one morning line, I really love the price on him in here to use in some of the exotics, though I do understand that Arrest Me Red will be very tough to beat. Now moving on to the next race that I want to talk about, looking at an even bigger price in race number 10, the mile and a half grade two turf cup. I'm really interested in last year's third place finisher in the number six, Glynn County. He's 30 to one on the morning line, and there are two big names in here that are going to take money, such as Arclo and Gufo. Now they both can win, but the chances that they run one, two are not very likely. And everyone else in this field is a great price and what looks like a very wide open race beyond those two entrants. Mike Maker is sending out four of the 12 horses in here. And it looks like the pace setter is going to be one of his with the number five Keystone field. However, I don't know that Glynn County is going to give himself quite as much work to do as some of the other shorter prices that like to come from very far off it. I think that he's going to sit a little bit closer than the Arclos or the Gufos or even Red Knight in this race and give himself a better chance of getting himself into the race, which is exactly what he did going back to this year's Fort Marcy. He finished third in that race that was going a mile and an eighth. And that was, of course, with plenty of given it as it was rated yielding. And he have, may have less than firm conditions on Saturday as well. But he got himself into that race early on, originally being around last and then kind of making this very early move to get himself into a better position. He then kind of just stayed around. And those were good horses. L'Imperator was most recently third in the Bowling Green. Sacred Life came back with a win. And then a third in the grade one Arlington Million at Churchill Downs. City Man came back with a win. Rock Emperor came back with a win. In fact, every single horse except the winner of that race has come back with a win out of 
that effort. Now, in his last race, he did run third at Saratoga on a turf course that was labeled good, while the winner went wire to wire, and he closed from last, and that was pretty much a merry-go-round type of race. Nobody was really making up ground. Everything was kind of controlled on the front end. He was the second longest shot in the field in there, so he also outran the odds that day as well. I'm hoping that he's a horse that stays in contact with the field early, that they don't fly and set some sort of crazy suicidal pace going this mile and a half journey, and that he can kind of just keep growing along and get a piece of it while other horses may be left with just too much ground to make up in the later stages. Now moving on to the next race, we're going to take a look at Phillies and Mares in the Grade 3 Ladies Sprint Stakes. Now we're going six and a half furlongs. There is yet another dangerous favorite in here for the Wesley Ward Barn with the number 10 Campanelle. And I'm not really trying to beat her, but I am trying to get a repeat of the exacta from a couple starts ago in the Giants Causeway Stakes at Keeneland with the number nine Star Divine, who is 10 to 1 on the morning line. Now, she is a horse that has outrun her odds on multiple occasions and one that I've developed a bit of an affinity for. Looking at her second place effort behind Campanella in that race at Keeneland, she did really kick into gear once she had room at 17 to 1 that day, and there was some separation between her and the third place finisher at the wire. Campanella was obviously much the best, but she was also supposed to be as she was 9 to 5 on the morning line. Then Stardivine was second again in the grade 3 Intercontinental at Belmont to Caravelle. But once again, she's having this inside trip, and you can see that she's never really moved into a position to get that clear inside to outside split and make a clear run on the outside. She's always inside of horses, and I don't know that that's necessarily where she wants to be or where any horse does their best running. Most of them like to get out in the clear to really make that outside run. Then last out at Saratoga in the grade three caress, she's once again a permanent fixture on the rail. And there's something that happens that is much more of detriment to Caravelle than her. But in the head on, you can see them both brushing each other repeatedly. And then ultimately Caravelle checks and finishes last. Caravelle, who returned to win the smart and fancy stakes following this, isn't just a nobody. I mean, she's won plenty of races. I didn't use her last time because I thought that this effort was making more of the trouble than it seemed like it actually was. But her return win was decent. She won two races before that over Star Divine. So I feel as though Star Divine has been keeping decent enough company to give her a shot in here. I really want to see what happens with a clear outside run for this horse, which she is finally going to get as she was post either one, two, or three in all of her starts so far this year. Now she's post nine, and I just want to give her a chance at a little bit of a price to see what she can do getting that clear outside run. So these are the three horses that I think have a chance to outrun the odds this weekend at Kentucky Downs. It's number seven, Gregorian Chant, number six, Glynn County, and number nine, Star Divine. These are within the late pick five of all the stakes action going on at Kentucky Downs. Thank you for watching and please like this video, subscribe to the Horse Racing Nation YouTube channel for all of our future handicapping content and don't miss any of it by turning on notifications.